In this video, we are going to talk about why you can't feel good for more than a day as a fearful avoidant. I am Valine and I am so happy you are here because you probably think that feeling good when you've released all this trauma is just a given. Then you will feel good and that you don't have any resistance to feeling good. And that is so not the case. I always know that when you go through the program, through the Healed and Happy program, you heal a lot and then you feel so good. And then you think, well, I'm here, I'm done. I don't need to do these last few modules because I just, I feel good. I release the biggest things. And then a lot of times you run into the resistance and the blocks around feeling good. And this is such an important and such a freeing thing to work on because you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to have everything perfectly healed to feel good. You are allowed to feel good right now as you are healing, as you are struggling, as you are still dealing with trauma. You don't have to postpone that. So <laughs> feel quite passionate about this, as you can see. I want you to know why you are not allowing yourself to feel good. And one of the reasons is that you associate feeling good with having expectations placed on you. So what you probably will notice when you feel good, you think that you have to meet other people's expectations. You think you have to do whatever other people want you to do or expect from you. A lot of fearful avoidance have a really hard time saying no, putting up boundaries. And so then the way your body helps you to put up a boundary is by not being able to do anything. And that can, that can be in so many ways. I mean, it could be that you become sick. It can be that um, you just are physically not able to do anything. But it can also be that you just don't feel good. You feel overwhelmed. You might feel depressed. And that becomes your reason to not meet people's expectations. That becomes your no. That becomes the way you say no. So one of the first things you're going to heal is that when you feel good, you don't have to do anything. Nobody has a right to your time. Nobody has a right to your energy. Nobody has a right to you, whether you feel good or not. You always get to decide what you do with your time and what you do with your energy. So no, you really don't, when you feel good, have to do whatever your mom says or do whatever your coworkers want from you. You get to feel good for you and still get to say, no, I'm not going to do that. I know that's what you want, but I'm not going to do that. So these expectations can cause you when you feel good for a day, you're like, oh, oh, now when I, when I keep feeling good, then I have to do all these things that I don't want to do. You don't have to. You really, really, really don't have to. You are always in your right to put up boundaries, to not do things, whether you feel on top of the world or you feel really bad. That is a very, a very important one to release and to heal in order for you to consistently feel good. The second one is the fear of failure. A lot of us are dealing with the fear of failure as a fearful avoidant. And you might think, well, what has feeling good have to do with the fear of failure? A, a lot of fearful avoidance have this um, train of thought that when they feel good, then they have to do the things that they know they should. They have to undertake action. They have to do things because... A lot of fearful avoidance believe that they are not worthy as they are. They are worthy because of what they do. And so you have to do things. But then you're also very afraid of failure. And so what happens when you feel good and you start to think, oh, wait, maybe I can just feel good for the rest of my life consistently. Then this fear of failure comes up. And one of the ways to cope with that is to not do it. I mean, you can't feel if you don't do it, right? So then you have to have a reason not to do it. And that is kind of not feeling good. Not feeling good is a reason not to do it. Because then you can say, well, I don't feel good today. I'll do it tomorrow or the day after or the day after. So not feeling good 
is actually a way to hide. You are dropping back down to hide, to not have to do things that can cause you to fail because you're so afraid of failure. And when you feel good, you kind of have no excuse and excuses to do the things you think you have to do. But again, you don't have to do anything. Whether you feel good or whether you feel bad, you are worthy. Whether you do things or not do anything at all, you are worthy and you are valuable. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how you feel. You are worthy regardless. You don't have to do things. And when you do decide to do things and you feel, you're still worthy and you're still valuable. Nothing can take that away. And the, the sooner you realize that and really feel that inside of yourself, the more it becomes so easy to just feel good consistently because you don't associate that fear of failure with feeling good. It sounds weird, right? Because in a way, not feeling good feels like failing, failing in healing, failing in being a normal functioning person. And yet not feeling good is a way to uh, to not fail at other things, right? Do you recognize that? Let me know in the comments below. <laughs> the third reason is that for a lot of fearful avoidance, mm, feeling good is in a way performing. It feels like performing. Because when you grew up, chances are that you were supposed to feel a certain way. You were not allowed to be angry. You were not allowed to be too sad. You were not allowed to be frustrated. You were not allowed to be um, unhappy. There was probably like a, a, a spot or a very narrow road is how I sometimes uh, explain it or saw it. That I had to walk a very narrow road in, in how I felt or how I portrayed myself. And that was happy, but not too happy. Not elated, just happy, just normal. But also uh, still being aware and sometimes worrying about things because that was responsible and that was a responsible thing to do. And uh, you're not allowed to be completely uh, relaxed. Does that ring a bell? <laughs> Let me know. Uh, so happy, but not too happy. But that just takes away a lot of other feelings that you weren't allowed to have. And so feeling good can actually kind of feel like having to perform. You have to feel good. You have to be happy, put on a smiley face. And that's exhausting, right? If you expect that of yourself, if you are putting that on yourself, that you have to feel good, that becomes a performance. It doesn't have to be because you don't have to perform. You don't have to perform anything. No matter how you feel, again, you are worthy and you are valuable. So the more you know that and the more you release the trauma surrounding all of this, the more it just becomes natural to feel good. But you're not holding on to it. You're not saying, oh, I feel good now. I have to keep feeling good. I have to have this consistently because not feeling good means I'm failing as a person. Which is just not true. So the more you heal, the more you will notice that feeling good just comes natural. It just comes natural. And that doesn't mean that it is super consistent for the rest of your life because you are human. And having a full range of emotions and experiencing all of, all of those emotions is a human experience. And that's completely safe <laughs> to be a human. But you don't have to perform ever ever. The fourth reason why you can't feel good for more than a day. You have felt good for a day and you're like, yes, yes, this was the breakthrough. I can now relax. I'm there. I don't, I don't have to do anything anymore. I can just relax. I feel good. And then out of nowhere, you start feeling anxious and you start worrying. And why is that happening? Because your fear brain is like, okay, wait, yeah, today felt good. But when you feel good, you don't pay attention anymore. You have to worry. So you have to feel scared. You have to feel anxious. You have to feel bad 
about yourself, about life, because that way you're going to stay um, alert and you're going to keep paying attention. And then you will see um, bad things coming and then you can prevent them. But if you're, if you're just going to feel good and you're going to relax, then you're not paying attention and anything could happen and everything could go wrong. So your fear brain is trying to keep you alert. It's trying to keep you on by getting you to feel bad again. Because then you feel like you have to work at it again and then you are paying attention according to your fear brain. The thing is, when you have all these anxious, anxious and bad feelings you have tunnel vision. You are not paying attention to everything. You are not honestly looking at your whole life. You are focusing on a negative. You are focusing on what you're missing. You are focusing on what is not there. You are not seeing all the things that are going well, that are working themselves out, that are going so in the direction that you actually want to go. So your fear brain is lying to you, <laughs> basically. And being relaxed and being happy and feeling good does not mean that you're not paying attention anymore. In fact, when you are relaxed, you are still alert and you will be more alert than when you have that tunnel vision and when you're anxious and panicked because then you are just zeroed in on a certain fear or a certain worry and you don't see a lot of other things. Whereas when you relax and when you're, when you're feeling good, you have the capability of having a relaxed alertness, which means that you oversee your life with um, relaxed alertness. So it's just not true that you don't see anything coming when you don't feel anxious. But that's just what your fear brain is telling you. You have to pay attention. You have to be on. Your fear system has to be on. So we can't feel good for too long. And then the fifth and last reason is that a lot of fearful avoidance have a fear of being seen, of being noticed. And when you feel good, you can associate that with being seen and being noticed. I mean, people usually gravitate towards people that feel good, right? So when you do feel good, you might notice that other people talk to you more, are friendlier, come closer. And that is exactly what you might be scared of. And so what you do is drop back into hiding because not feeling good gives you an excuse to retreat, to be alone, to not see anybody. So to hide and not be seen and not be noticed. Because there's a lot of negative associations with being seen and noticed when in childhood um, you had a fearful avoidant parent or a parent who was scary in whatever way. And a lot of fearful avoidance had that. So... Um, then it's more safe, obviously, to not be seen and not be noticed, to kind of fly under the radar. And so what a lot of fearful avoidance do is just not allow themselves to feel too good or too happy because that gives them the feeling that they are flying under the radar and they are not really seen and not really noticed. So do you see how, how you have maybe resistance towards feeling good and then you can heal and heal and heal and what will happen is you will have these breakthroughs and you will definitely have healed things but then you're like oh now I'm here now I get to be happy and that point just never comes you never allow yourself to completely be happy and so what you think is oh I have to heal more before I'm happy I have to heal even more before I'm happy and that could go on for years literal years and you will feel better. It, everything will be better. You will have more freedom. You will have more relaxation. You will have more fun. You will have more connection. So life will be better because healing does that. But allowing yourself to be happy, you can do that right now. You can start with that so that your whole healing process just becomes easier and it doesn't become this chase for the happiness at the end of the tunnel. You get to be happy while you're healing. You get to be happy through this whole process. That's what you deserve. That is absolutely what you deserve. And so what we need to do is figure out what is keeping you from allowing yourself to be happy right now and heal that and release that. And that is exactly what we're doing in Healed and Happy, my online program. So if you want that, if you 
are deciding right now that you are worthy and that you deserve to feel good because you do, you do. And feel good consistently. Check out the link in the description below and that's where you'll find more information about the program. And in that program, we will go to the roots of the fearful avoidant attachment style and we will work specifically on allowing yourself to feel good. Not in 10 years time when you've completely magically healed every single thing. No, right now, right now, you get to feel good right now and you get to decide what you do with your time and your energy because nobody else in the whole world has a right to your time and energy. This is your life and you decide what you do and what you want to do and you get to feel good and still say no because it's your life and you deserve it. I am so happy you are here, truly, as always. And I will see you in the next one.